have you ever had a day where you warm up with a little bit of deathmatch and you play insane? You think today is gonna be a great day of competitive, but then you get into your first match and you somehow play terrible, even though you just played insane five minutes ago. Why does that happen and how can we fix that? The first thing we need to establish is the difference in pressure in deathmatch and in competitive. Pressure to perform is an absolute real thing that has a very real effect on how we play and perform. And in deathmatch, most players don't really feel any pressure. It's because at the end of the day, a deathmatch doesn't matter. It doesn't matter one tiny little bit. But then when it comes to competitive, the pressure is on. You don't want to lose RR, you don't want to upset your team, and you of course want to try to win so you can rank up even higher. I have seen players that play deathmatch like tier 1 pros. Their mechanical skill, their aim, everything is just unreal. But then when it comes to competitive, they look like a potato. They're hesitant, you can clearly tell that they for some reason aren't confident, and all of this is because of how they think, their mentality. So let's take a deep dive into how to fix this common issue. When playing deathmatch, most players just play their game. They're not thinking about the fact that they can miss a shot or that they might get one tapped. They're playing their game confidently without thinking about the negatives that might happen. When they get one tapped or die, they didn't spend a second thinking about the fact that that could happen before it actually happened. Thinking about mistakes that you might make will put you in one of the worst mental states you can be in. We've all been there. We're holding an angle and it might not be the best angle and we're thinking, if I miss this shot, I'm dead. And who would have thought? We miss our shot and die when the enemy comes. Our focus isn't directed where it should be. All we should do is play reactively to the situation that is about to happen. Have an empty mind and put all of our focus into the task at hand. Another thing that a lot of people who are great in deathmatch but terrible in competitive struggle with is their relationship with mistakes. And obviously, you want to limit your mistakes as much as possible when playing competitive. But what you have to understand is that every good player takes risks. And what you also need to understand is that sometimes not going for a high risk, high reward play is a bigger mistake than playing it low risk, low reward. Sure, if you mess up those rounds where you have a big opportunity at the cost of a big risk, your teammates will get mad at you. But if you want to excel in this game, you can't just always play it safe. If you see a great opportunity and you go for it and it doesn't work out, you should be happy that you went for it. That's the relationship you want to have with mistakes. Confidence issues are unfortunately also a massive factor behind why players play worse in competitive. Sometimes when you play a match, you just don't feel like the best player in the lobby. But if you want to be a great at this game, you need to be so confident that you genuinely think that you're the best in every game you play. But naturally, you can't fake confidence. You can't just say, I'm the most confident player. And all of a sudden, you are incredibly confident. So. How do you gain confidence when playing competitive? The first way to build confidence is to understand your strengths and weaknesses. When playing competitive, you want to focus on playing to your strengths. And when practicing, you want to focus on heavily improving your weaknesses. If you are aware of your own strengths and weaknesses, you can build a playstyle that consistently revolves around your strengths. Meaning, you'll instantly become a better player. Another way to build confidence is to recognize when you succeed. If you've had a game where you played insane, don't just hop right into the next match. Recognize how you were by far the best player in that game, and then you can move on. Our minds work in the most fascinating way. A positive self-talk like this goes an incredibly long way in building confidence in Valorant. The third easy way to build confidence is to properly challenge yourself. If you can hop into a custom game where you're playing against players in a higher rank than yourself, you should 100% do that. If you do this and notice that you're playing good, you'll gain so much confidence for your next competitive game. There are many Valorant streamers in Immortal and Radiant that host games over on their Twitch channel. So I highly recommend playing a few of those games if you find the time. The next important factor to play well in competitive is who you surround yourself with and who you queue into games with. If you queue into games with a guy that always blame outside factors like him being unlucky or that he's lagging or anything in that category, it's very easy for you to start getting this victim-like mentality as well. 
If you want to reach your full potential as a player, you shouldn't surround yourself with people who doesn't hold themselves accountable for their own mistakes. Being able to admit when you make a mistake and learn from it is one of the needed skills if you want to climb the ranks in Valorant. And unfortunately, a lot of players have a hard time admitting that they aren't perfect. If you have a friend that you know blames these kinds of things, obviously don't just stop talking to him. But Try to tell him that there's no point in blaming unluckiness. There's literally nothing positive about blaming this superstitious belief that he, out of everyone in the world, was picked out to be more unlucky than others. If you want to become good, you gotta face the hard and honest truth, and that is that if you lose a game, you and your team didn't play good enough. Moving on, communication is also one reason some players are insane in deathmatch, but don't do well in competitive. A lot of players that are insane aimers and mechanical players unfortunately don't have the best mentality and team communication. And not having a good mentality can often lead to your teammates getting flamed, yelled at, you name it. If you are playing a match and you see that some players on your team are doing it terribly, the worst thing you can do is start flaming them. The best thing you can do is try being positive towards them, even though sometimes that is very difficult. Being negative towards the players who are already playing incredibly bad won't motivate them to try to step it up. But if you show that you actually want to win the game, you'll have a million times higher chance of actually winning that game. In some of my games, when we're down a 9-3 or 10-2, I simply just say, wouldn't it be kind of fun if we won this game? It's a very easy sentence that motivates the team a little bit to try and play focus for the remaining rounds. Being able to be a leader when things are going terribly and everyone is demotivated is a characteristic that will get you far in Valorant. The final topic I want to touch on in today's video is of course the use of abilities. In Deathmatch, you don't go around using abilities, but if you want to get as high a rank as you possibly can, then you gotta be able to use abilities at a high level. And a lot of people aren't utilizing abilities to their full potential because lineups are apparently cringe, and therefore they don't play them. I mean, I don't know about you, but I play to become as good and as high a rank as I possibly can. And if I have to play some lineups to win a game, I will 100% do that. I hope you guys agree with my mentality here. If you don't, let me know in the comments below. Learning a few lineups is incredibly easy, and you can learn a bunch from just watching a few of the many YouTube videos out there on lineups. And I highly recommend doing so, because I am here to teach you how to win more games and do better in competitive. But there you have it, my video on why you're insane in a deathmatch, but not in competitive. If you guys enjoyed this video, consider dropping a like on it and subscribing to the channel, as that helps me out so much more than you think. And other than that, please go on to have a fantastic day.